Good morning, Third City Christian Church. We get to uh, have the honor and privilege of hearing some stories from Guatemala uh, and the experiences there. This is just a small representation of the team of 14, but round of applause for these guys and, and being willing to serve, being willing to go, um, and giving up their time. Yeah, and I pray that they feel encouraged by their church. So go ahead and introduce yourself and say how many years you've been serving on Team Guatemala and going to Guatemala. I'm Jen Murray, and I've been doing three, week, three years. Devon Kurtz, three years. Abby Miller, two years. Jake Allen this is my third year. Awesome. So this morning, I, I kind of want to hear more. I mean, I mean, we got context from that video of where you were and what was happening. I mean, there was a lot going on while you were there. But the people you were with um, and the things that you were doing um, did a lot of, of hope giving. And I, I want to hear those stories today. So the first... Um, the first thing I want to ask you is for you to explain some of the culture shock that you experienced this year going to Guatemala. Uh, the culture shock for me was probably the poverty and the living conditions. Yeah. Um, even though I've been there uh, two other years, it's hard to describe right. um, unless you see it. Mm. But even in those conditions, they're thankful for what they have and they're hard workers. Yeah, I definitely agree with what Jen said. Uh, one of the families that we went to visit on a home visit um, was a mother, single mother of five children, and her oldest uh, was 13, and she actually had her own bed, but it was a uh, single bed. Mm -hmm. And then the mother and the four children shared a queen-size bed. That wasn't flat. It was concave. So, right. wow. um, and they're living in a dirt floor. Um, but what was really impressive was the mother, though they're dirt poor, and no matter how poor they were in that area of the community, they focused on getting their kids education so that they're they can yeah. get out of their conditions that they're in. We even talked in the. Uh, in the 8 o'clock service, I, was, I asked Devo, I go, so how many houses could you fit in this room? And he said four or five, just in the well in that place that we do a service over there. It's insane. It's insane. Um, a culture shock for me was definitely just water. Um, when we were there, we couldn't drink any water that wasn't bottled. Um, brushing your teeth, you had to use bottled water, right. stuff that you just take for granted. You don't think twice about turning on the faucet running your toothbrush under, or I remember the first time we were told, don't open your mouth in the shower, and I was like, what? what? <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. and then you like have to be conscious of these things, because they're infrastructure, and we're so used to clean water that they yeah. don't have that. We could get really sick if, you know, we opened our mouth in the shower, yeah. accidentally drank some of this water. Um, and that's, that's definitely, you have to think a lot about that. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think the big culture shock for me was uh, this place is, is so beautiful. It's probably one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. And at the same time, it's so dirty and trashy. There's mm. trash everywhere. So it's kind of like Abby was saying, like the beauty doesn't necessarily match the, the poor infrastructure. Yep, wow. but they still have hope. Yeah, that's awesome. The next question I have for you guys um, was what did you see through God's eyes this week? And, th and that question saying, how did you see humanity like God sees humanity? How did you view situations like God views situations? Can you guys speak to that? This week was a good week for me spiritually. Um, yeah. I got to see a handful of children, 7, 8, 13, give mm -hmm. themselves to God. So I saw love. And if you look at the picture of us doing that, we're in a circle, we're praying, we have our hands on yeah. uh, the people, and they're just tears flowing, wow. and they're just selfless. Yeah. We see these photos coming back from Guatemala, and we always see them building houses or pouring cement or whatever, but we also kind of sometimes forget that you're there building hope, and you're building um, um, a, like, like a spiritual future for these people, too, and making those connections, and it's awesome. Yeah, although we go and provide with our hands and our feet um, in building these homes, they are very grateful for those things and joyous to have them. Um, but I had a, a really good conversation 
through Google Translate, of course, because I don't speak wow, their language, yeah. um, with uh, one of the community um, volunteers. Um, and he, he said that they greatly appreciated even more so what we come to do in sharing God's love yeah. and his, mes his message. So um, that was great to hear from him and to see the, the heart that's in it. Yeah, that's awesome. What did you see through God's eyes? Um, the people there, they have so little um, that they count everything as a blessing. I don't think I've ever once considered every pair of shoes, clothes, every meal, the roof over my head as a blessing from God. Wow. But because these people have so little and their faith is so strong that these tiny little things that I just take for granted every day, don't think twice about, I feel in, almost entitled to, I would say, um, are blessings that these people um, love and they praise God for. Wow. I'll try to remember that the next time I'm looking in my closet and saying, I have nothing to wear. I have nothing to wear today, right? It's those things that you remember. Wow. I think I see uh, God seeing his people doing, you know, his will and his wishes yeah. uh, through us, spreading the word and, and helping them people out uh, is really, really humbling. Yeah. Yeah, to actually step into work that needs to be done rather than just cheering on from the sidelines. Wow. Um, my third question for you guys, and, and I kind of want to spend a little bit more time on this one, is how are you spiritually different because of this week? Can you speak to that? I think that I'm spiritually different because I'm full of love. Like, my cup is full, and yeah. I, when I come back, I'm ready to share what I have learned uh, to the people around me and mm -hmm. just be the child of God that I am yeah. um, and spread his word and just give love and try to be thankful yeah. for what I have. Yeah, you said something even in the last service of like even trying to traverse the fog of this next week of how yeah. you process. So we're all, all answering these questions, right. but it takes a good week to kind of process yeah. everything that yeah. we've been through and reflect and yeah, think. Yeah, well, and what time did you get to bed last night? Because you traveled yesterday. What time did you, like, like actually go to at bed? At 12. All 12, right, 12, so 12. they were up here at 6. <laughs> you snooze button people. But she gets it. She gets it, yeah. right? <laughs> but that fog is so interesting because you're switching this context from even like what Abby's saying with the water. You have this context of this world is different to now you're back in your home and, like, you could drink from any faucet that you see and then... That context switching, I'm sure, takes a while, but once the dust settles to see that difference, wow. How are you different spiritually since this week? Well, it's really hard to put into words. Right. Um, but, you know, I feel as though God was speaking to me in, through, through our hearts, um, seeing what um, the mayor of the town um, being involved and mm. you know in a lot of a lot of society in our world um, politics is about the man or right. the woman right. um, in, in this it's getting ourselves out of the way allowing God to work in our lives wow. through through us um, the heart of that mayor and how much he cared for the people it wasn't about his status mm. And the volunteers that we had um, in the community, you know, yeah. they're being selfless. Right. Um, but you also, as a congregation, are a part of that, uh, yeah. allowing us to go and share God's love with these people. Yeah. So thank you for that. And with a, with a mayor that actually has a missional heart towards all of that as well. That's a pretty rare thing, like especially from what you've experienced in the past, you were saying like that, that there's someone in leadership actually heart into the situation. Wow, it's awesome. Um, well, I guess how I've seen things and how I'm coming back is not only talking about those blessings and not taking things so much for granted, but also answering God's call. You know, it's very easy to say, well, I'm not strong enough. I don't speak that language. Um, but sometimes when God pulls on your heart, you can do it, and that's why he's doing it. And for me, answering that, answer, when someone offers that opportunity, saying yes, oh, I'll help, you know, pour a concrete slab, I'll help 
try and play and talk with these children even though there's that language barrier, I think. Yeah, that's so interesting to feel that, that, that call into the situation and necessarily you don't feel like you have what it takes, but you step up to the plate and you let God swing for you. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that's how it felt like all week in Guatemala, especially because especially you can't even communicate that well with these people, but you're stepping up to the plate and letting God work. That's awesome. I feel, I feel closer to God this week and a little more spiritual just by seeing the power that he had and what, uh, like she said, what he made us uh, capable of doing. Yeah. And just still giving them people hope. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you see something in, in these photos that come back and these smiles on these children. Mm-hmm. You know, and you, like, I know that we kind of talked about, like, even after the fog of this week, you don't want to lose what happened in your heart that week. And I feel like those smiles can be that reminder, you know, that water can be that reminder, whatever it is. So my final question, uh, just real quick, is what was one thing that you would want to tell us here stateside um, about going, about being the hands and feet of God? What is, what is an encouragement or, or something that you would give us talking to going? I think um, I could talk forever about this, but I think that it is just necessary. It's necessary for Mm. your growth um, as you follow God and just the experiences that you see while you're there. Um, I don't take very much, many pictures while I'm there because I can't capture, so I just have to keep it in Ah. my memory. But it's necessary for growth. Um, Yeah. yeah. Mm. That's awesome. (laughs) Yeah, like you said, we could talk about that the rest of the time. We could just go, yes, absolutely. In short, yes, absolutely. I agree. That's one thing you would encourage us, Devo. I would encourage you to surrender to him in all things. Yeah. And allow him to work in your heart. Um, You don't have to leave this country to do that. You can do it in your own family, in community. But we do need more support and help. Um, in outside of just our congregation here. Yeah. Um, so many are thirsty and hungry for it, as each of us are for his love and his grace. So. Yeah. And one of the things we talked about, Diva, was like you're, you're coming back and you feel like you've, you've really stepped into that, that sphere, that, that airfield of actually sharing your faith and being bold in that way. And we were kind of talking, it's like, it's like going off the high dive for the first time. You spend like the first three summers going, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it. And then you get up there and you kind of like go back and forth and back and forth. But in Guatemala, it's like you just kind of got shoved off. And so, and so now you've done that, it's not that scary. And yeah, I, I bring that with you into what we're doing as a church for sure. Um, the one thing I can say if, is God, if God is pulling your heart to do something, there's no excuse not to try. There's, I guess mm. you can come up with a lot of excuses not to. Going to Guatemala, I'm not physically strong enough. I couldn't build a house. I don't speak good enough Spanish, you know. Right. Or even maybe doing kids ministry here. I'm not that good with kids. Uh, yeah. You know, they wouldn't like me. They wouldn't think I'm, yeah. you know, fun and enjoyable. Um, through God, all things are possible. And there's a reason he's pulling at your heart to do it. Yeah. He wouldn't be pulling at your heart if you weren't capable. So take that bold leap of faith and just go for it. Yeah, yeah. I love that theme even through everything you've shared with us is this idea of stepping up to the plate and letting God swing. But you've got to step up to the plate, right? It's one thing you'd encourage us with, Jake. I think if you ever get the chance to do something like this, whether it's Guatemala or any yeah. mission trip, definitely don't pass it up. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Well, round of applause for, for these guys and for... Um, the crew that went to Guatemala, we're thankful that you guys are willing and able and going um, and, and representing our church around the world, but also the kingdom of God around the world. So thank you for that. I'm going to pray. Um, we're about to take communion. And um, the heart of Guatemala is the heart of Jesus. It is dying for the world, laying yourself low for the world, for all the people of the world. And so as we, as we move towards this communion, let's remember that sacrifice that was modeled for us uh, when, we're, when we're taking these symbols. So I'm going to pray. God, thank you for all that you're teaching us. And thank you for leading by example of what it means to be humble and to lay your life low and to serve people who seem like they don't deserve it. That's me. That's everyone here. And so I pray today that we see you. 
we see you clearly, we hear the gospel clearly in, in this Guatemala testimony, and uh, in this series of talking about going, I pray that we don't feel like the best excuse is that, well, the mission trips are over for this year. I pray that you help us see the mission field that's in our house, in our kids, in the, in the children of our community, at our work, um, the attitudes of people that are always pushing against the kingdom of God. I pray for this city and the schools and the safety of those schools. And I pray for um, every, every instance that we have a chance to shine the light of God around this city and wherever we go. So um, work on our hearts today, God. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I had it all planned. I had all of this worked out, and I had this awesome message. I get to spend uh, just a, a brief moment with you here about gilded houses and gilded rooms and how we can hold our pride up to the light and we could see right through it. And then Ransom told me, you got seven minutes, and I had to wipe it all. So <laughs> thanks a lot, Ransom. No, I'm just kidding. But seriously, so I was working on this message this week, and about halfway through it, I got super convicted um, that I have way more of my heart to share with you this morning, as embarrassing as it is. And I'll get to that. And I know I said I was going to share something embarrassing, and a few of you like leaned in. You dogs. You dogs. But we'll get there. Um, there is something infinitely valuable that I found in Philippians that I think we need to see this morning. And so here's Paul. He's in this situation. He sees the journey ahead for believers, and he knows it's going to be a long road, and he knows it's going to be a hard road. But he knows it's the road. He knows it's the way. And so this book of Philippians is just a rallying of the troops saying, hey, we're going to go, and this is how you should go. And so Paul's in the middle of this hardship, which only doubles down and proves the point of what he's trying to make. And so we pick up in chapter 2, verse 1 through 11. He says, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, this is kind of rhetorical. He's saying, of course you do. Of course you have felt this. Living out your faith, of course you're experiencing this. The list goes on, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete. He's saying, I know all of that's true, so do me a favor. I know you're experiencing that, so do me a favor. Be like-minded. Have the same love. Be one in spirit and of one mind. Basically, what he is encouraging is saying, don't get individualistic. Don't get selfish here. Don't buy into what our culture is telling us to be the superhero of the story. He's saying, no, no, no. Unite. Lock arms and move forward when you're going. Move forward as a church. Unite. And he says, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Don't get full of yourself. Don't play the superhero. Don't, don't think higher of yourself than you should. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of other people. And here's the gold. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used for his own advantage. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. In the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. So why should we go? This morning I want to answer two questions. Why should we go and why aren't we going? Why should we go? Two things. First, Jesus told us to go in the Great Commission. He said, now go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'll be with you as you do this to the end of the age. So Jesus told us to. And so no further authority, <laughs> no reason should be necessary for those who claim Jesus Christ as Lord. There's not really a conversation to be had there. There's no persuasion needed. Two, Jesus inspires us to go by the way that he humbled himself. As a good leader would, he led the way in this. He showed us how. And I want to take my final five minutes with you to talk about this second one. The problem is that our conceit gets in the way. Our pride, our high opinions of ourselves. And this is what keeps us, and a lot of us, from going anywhere and doing anything at all for the kingdom of God. Doing anything at all 
whether it is in your home, whether it is in your workplace, whether it is in Guatemala, or whether it is in Kenya. This is what keeps us from doing anything at all for the kingdom of God. Here's where my embarrassment and my heart is to be shared. It's about three weeks ago, three weeks out from Guatemala leaving, and Jen and Jake and I were having a conversation on the plaza steps after a 9.30 service, and I knew they were going to ask me. They were going to ask me if I was going to Guatemala, and they did. And my defenses weren't quite set, so I sort of stumbled over myself, but I thought, I'm very busy. I'm very busy. I have many responsibilities here at home. I'm sure you don't understand. Um, and, and I forgot. I forgot the deadline was coming up. And I was, as I was circulating these lies in my head, I became very convicted, very convicted. And uh, they ended up getting a lot more than they asked for from me because I just kind of started to spit up on them. I just, oh. <laughs> you know how when you don't really mean to just like just puke your heart to somebody and then all of a sudden you are? That was one of these moments. And so I turned to them and I started telling them how absolutely terrified I am of leaving the country to do mission work. I'm absolutely terrified of it. I'm absolutely afraid of losing control, my perceived control of the world. I'm absolutely terrified of losing safety, and I could drop to my knees at the thought that it is my responsibility that I would put my wife in danger. And I've struggled with this, and I've told them about how I struggle with this, but it's personal. Because if you told Jane we were leaving for Kenya, she would pack her bags quicker and more efficiently than any vacation we've ever been on. <laughs> I carry her bag and I go, you need this? <laughs> what, what is in here? This is personal. This is my thing. This is my issue. So here's Jen, the one that was sitting up here, just listening, smiling. Could you imagine her smiling? Just ministering to my soul and letting me work through this. And sometimes you just know the answer all along, but you just got to say it, right? And I realized that the only reason that I had not and was not going on any of these mission trips this year was my conceit. It was my self-interest. It was my perceived pride and control, my high opinion of my life. I'm guessing I'm not alone in this, but even if I am, this is my mess to bring before God. This is mine. And as I'm processing this, I'm in tears on the drive home. I'm ashamed of how selfish I am. And I'm embarrassed of how shallow my heart was for the people of this world. And all I could see was Jesus Christ hanging on the cross, dying for the people of this world. And my conceit couldn't remain while looking at my Savior dying for me, giving his breath so that I could breathe, shedding his blood so that I could live. And if you honestly consider that moment, you guys, like, honestly think about it. If you let that sink in, your conceit will be eroded. I promise. I'm a satisfied customer of this. I went home and I confessed to Jane that I'm afraid of losing control. I'm terrified of possibly putting her in danger and it being my fault. But I confess something more important. That this is just simply a lack of trust in a father who says he cares for us. That's truly what it is. It's a moment of simply surrendering that I am not God. And maybe you need to join me in that surrender today too. And freedom and peace rushed over my heart like a hurricane, you guys. This has been welling up for years inside of me. I'm not perfect, but I'm so refreshed in the promises that God makes to protect and provide for me and my family. Praise him. So I couldn't stand here and preach at you on how to go and convince you and convict you to go and do something without telling you my struggle with this either. But Jesus did commission us to go and no farther, further authority or persuasion is necessary for those who follow Jesus Christ. The solution of my conceit was the humility of Jesus Christ. There he was, he had the riches of heaven, and he laid them down for my interests, my interest of death not being the end of me, the interest of being set free from my shame. 
the interest of experiencing God's love unlimited for eternity. Don't think so highly of yourself, but think of others and their interests above yours. Jesus Christ led the way. I'm convinced that the solution to your vain conceit, your high opinion of yourselves and your pride that's keeping you from humbling yourself and serving anybody can be remedied by one hard look at Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world. Because if I just convinced you that you have a gilded house and you need to move away from it, that's just convincing you that you need to try harder. And what have I accomplished then? But if you look at Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world, that might change your life. And he entered into death and he blew a hole out the, black, the back wall and walked straight through it with the keys of death in his hands. And he lives and he reigns and he fixes and restores even me, even you, even us. Here, today, now, and forevermore. Amen? Pray with me. God, set our hearts free from our conceit. Set our hearts free from our pride. Thank you for being so patient with me as I stumble towards you. Thank you for being so patient with us as we stumble towards you. We long for the freedom that you give, and we're not finding it in our own perfection. We're not finding it in our pride. We're not finding it in our control. And I pray for the heart here this morning that feels like they need to surrender, like you had me surrender. Pray that you would show them how much you love them and how much grace you have to give. Not that they're coming home to a storming father, but they're coming home to a father who wants to wrap around them and put a ring on their finger and say, welcome home. I'll protect you. I'll provide. That's the father you are. That's the father I have experienced. And I pray that you don't stop sending this church places. God, I feel that we have only woken the bear, that we will continue to go out into this world, that we will continue to pick away at our selfishness, and then we will start to see people like you see people. I pray that you unwind any pride that we have as a church, but that you humble our hearts completely to be servants of this world, no matter what country, no matter what race, no matter how they speak, that we serve them like you did. Because Jesus, you died for the world. You gave your life for the world, and so should we. In 